So uh, that's confirmation of that one. The world number 36 it'll be that takes on the world number 10 in the top uh, half semi-final. Still plenty more to unfold and in the bottom half, but we're going to turn our attention next up to uh, men's doubles, our third match, a mouth-watering all-seeded Anglo-Japanese men's doubles quarter-final featuring the third seeds, Kimura and Tsunoda, taking on the eighth-seeded Englishman, Ellis and Smith. And that's the men's doubles draw as we look at it. Where that's at the top half of the draw. Uh, as you can see, Astro and Rasmussen having the win last night over the Popov brothers of France. Who will they play? Well, as you can see, head to head, Kimura Sonoda lead 3 0. But uh, Alison Langridge will be keen to notch a win, particularly here on home turf. That would mean so much to Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge, who uh, follow the Japanese to the court. So all seeded affair. Third seeds from Japan taking on these guys, the eighth seeds off of a career high ranking of 12th in the world, Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. Hello, Chris. I have a coin. Red or black? Red. Black. That side. Silver received. Received. Who's serving? Who's serving? Okay. So, Chris Langridge to serve. They want the slower of the two ends, the far end, elected by the English. It's going to be uh, Takashi Kimura who will receive first. Well, they've been uh, a familiar pairing on our screens, Kyogo and Sonoda and Takashi Kimura over the years, the world number fives. They've been up to two in the world and I've really missed them. They're a real treat to watch. It'll be interesting this one to see how sharp they are. You saw how Momoto was fumbling a little at the start of his singles match and ousted in the end. What of these two, Takeshi Kimura? 31 years of age these days. From Saga in Japan, as I say, together they've been up to two in the world, these two, a real standout pair. They lost in the second round here at the All England, did the Japanese last year, though they were semi-finalists the year before in 2019. And this man, a human firework, Kyogo Sonoda, never keeps still. He's uh, fascinating to watch from Kumamoto, as so many of the Japanese players are. Their path through, well, in the first round, took out some Danes, 13 and 12, half an hour needed, and then Koga and Seto, their compatriots from Japan in the second round in 35 minutes, 18 and 8. So coming through without conceding a game, as have uh, Alison Langridge as well. Chris Langridge, 35 years of age, daddy of two children, twins I believe, resides in Epsom in Surrey, one metre 80. And Marcus Ellis from Huddersfield, of course, and uh, we're seeing a lot of him on our screens these days, playing alongside uh, Lauren Smith in mixed doubles as well, still going strong. Just playing off that career high ranking right now, these two. That's their path through. Took out the Irish, McGee and Reynolds, in the opening match, 14 and 13. And then a Hemming and Stallwood of England, 9 and 13. So very emphatic for both pairs. So a real stiff test for them both. Christian Johannesson of Denmark in the chair. And the Finn service judge opposite him. Well, 
finalist who contested a couple of finals in Kharkiv International and Azerbaijan International in 2019. Since then, though, they made quarterfinals of the Yonex Thailand Open, the English, and they won the Denisa Denmark Open, of course, in 2020. So, quarter finalists here last year. The players at the top, we can picture from England. So it'll be Chris Langridge that'll get us underway with his serve to come. Just a bit of last minute revision here in this doubles On my right, quarterfinal. Chris Langridge and Marcus Ellis. England. And on my left, Keiko Sonora, Takeshi Kamura, Japan. Chris Langridge to serve to Takeshi Kamura. La ball. Play. Well, the last two showings, these two uh, lost uh, in straight games to today's opponents. Most recently at the Fuzhou China Open. Prior to that, the Denisa Denmark Open in 2018. But they extended them to three games at the French Open, and that was back in 2016, five years ago. They're an awkward pair, the Japanese, very experienced. Former number twos in the world, which you mentioned. And they are rapier quick, really like lightning, these two. Sweats profusely, does Chris Language. That's what that was all about. He said the racket almost flew out of my hand, partner. Lucky I didn't hit you with that one. <laughs> yeah, the drift just tugging that wide takes a little while to get used to it. It's very subtle. Tandem when they made Olympic uh, bronze in Rio 2016. They made the heady heights of 14 in the rankings. They've surpassed that now up to 12th. Really quite a coup. Often the secret if you can get over the top of Chris Language is a really well played point, and the Japanese managed to right there. Look at that, he's brilliant around the net. His language very, very quick. But that's the pattern of play that a lot of teams use against them. Consistent there, wasn't he, Langridge? And they're normally at their best in these sort of flat, hard game exchanges, but uh, not against the Japanese. They are just that little bit quicker normally. That said, though, they're as I say, they're, 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 they've not had a lot of match play. An opportunity for these two is massive. A chance to make the semi-finals of the All England. 
Well, it's not even that hot out here, really, is it? In all honesty, it's not like we're playing in uh, Bangkok as we were. Six, three. Good start from the Japanese. language lovely flat hard drive right back at you it was really well played got some heavy strapping on that right knee the 35 year old oldest man on court but moving very well wonderful Nice tight, high intensity rally there that we love so much, the rat -a -tat in men's doubles, don't we? <laughs> Japanese coming out on top of this one. And already they've engineered a run of five consecutive points from the very start of the match. Finalist last year here, Alison Langridge. Six, eight. Lucky break off the net there, off the return for Marcus. They'll take anything. Who wouldn't? Marcus so good at sort of providing the energy around the back of the court whilst the language 
Provides the touch and flair up front. Oh, that's wonderful from the Japanese duo. Keshi Kamura, very, very alert here. So quick to intervene. Good pace from Langridge, the elder statesman in the English team. Especially now uh, Rajiv Fusif has retired to join the coaching team. Well, there's been fears that it could be his last uh, Yonex All England with the Tokyo Olympics this summer as well. 35 years of age, perhaps a sensible time to bow out before the next four year cycle. Though nothing's been confirmed. And we'll miss him if he does go, that's for sure. Electric from Kiego Sonoda. Well, it seems that the uh, he slowed down a little bit, the man there executing that smash, because normally he's dancing around. He can barely keep still between points. Oh, no, no, he, nothing's changed. I'm just watching him now. He moves incessantly, this fellow. He's like a Duracell bunny. Eventually, father. Eventually, Father Time will have its way. They're only 31 and still looking very, very sprightly, these two. Look at him. Bag of nerves. So, to the turn. The Japanese with the lead, three point cushion, 11 points to eight. Oh. 
Well, they're so good at having their last laugh, aren't they, Camille and Sonoda, in this kind of point? They just love speed. It sort of feeds into their hands, really. Japanese so mixing it up really well, causing havoc. Thirteen, ten. Oh. Just so tough to rush. Good call from language. Definitely the captain of the team, always barking out orders. Come on, Marcus. Last year, the English pair reached the quarterfinals, as I said, uh, having dumped out the fifth seeds. Alfian and Arianto of Indonesia in the second round. That was quite a win. Lost out to Ivanov and Sozanov of Russia in that quarterfinal. really hard, suggests Langridge. Or did he or didn't he? Let's have a look. Well, no, the net didn't flinch, so I didn't think so. It's been given, though. Three in a row for Alyssa Langridge right now. Can they build? Ah, it's just missed. So it's over. Well, a speculative serve, and he knows it by the looking at his body language there, Marcus Ellis. Worth a try. Game, isn't it? This team have done really well to pull it round from 8 11 at the mid game interval, hauled it right the way back, just a point shy now. Yes. Oh. 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 
Yeah, a little bit of hesitation and it cost them dear. The Japanese love that kind of point. They're smiling at the end of it. That's how much they enjoyed it. Yeah, a little bit of hesitancy there and that's where the point was really lost. The short, a uh, couple of short lift aways. I know this language have already signed up for the Orléans Masters Super 100 level event in France uh, next week. And they'll play a couple of Algerians in the first round of the men's doubles there. Keen to keep the flow of match momentum, that's what it's all about. Good serve from Marcus. Precision. Good intensity point from both teams again. Oh, despite Chris Language mixing it up nicely there, Hugo Sonoda really injected a lot of pace on his smash. He's used to the dispenser, isn't he? <laughs> It's quick to pounce. He delights in that. What a reaction from Chris Langridge. 19, Spiked right onto the line. Irrespective of any drift, he kind of just hit through it right here. Let's see it again. Risky shot to play. Look at that. But he found it. Never before have Ellison Langridge taken the opening game against today's opponents. They took the middle game back in October of 2016 at the Stade Pierre de Coupetin and the French Open. Then went on to lose. Well, they'd be delighted if they could find a way through this opener. And they've got a slender lead here. It's a possibility. Japanese very alert there, weren't they? Mm. 
He's always smiling on court. Glad to be back. <laughs> Says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> they elected to play the German Open rather than the Swiss. Well, the German Open got cancelled in the end. Can you believe it? So the Japanese just hadn't played any match play coming here. So frustrated they must have been. And saying that, they're all geared up to come to the Asian swing in January. But of course, when Momota proved positive at the airport, they're all had to go back home and unpack. Mega frustration all around. Here we are, though. A game point for the Japanese. to win the game. Wow. Terrific all round. Mesmerizing badminton on show court one here at the All England. Doesn't get much better than that. 21-19. Camira and Sonoda snatch the opening game somehow. Well, the last point of that game was the longest rally of the match. 52 shots it was. Going the way of Kamira and Sonoda, of course. Here we are then, the start of game number two. The Japanese are game to the good. get on the uh, attack first that's really good play from language fight for the net neither team wanting to give away the lift opportunity that's natural well both teams with uh, such Excellent flat games, great driving and pushing from the mid court. 
Now this is a really good start from the English. They've managed to flush away the negativity of losing that tight opener and forge forwards. Oh yeah, straight back at you again. Language so good at that. Just when you thought Sonoda had the upper hand in the rally, it was well struck, but right onto the racket of language. This is a great example of keeping the racket up at the net. Let's see this, watch this. Look at that, well done. It's tough to do that to him. He is really quick. Got revenge though, didn't he, pretty quickly. Pouncing all over that. Good early return, popped it up. Yeah, got the treatment. He's almost comical, isn't he, with his quirky antics, Kiego Sonoda. Terrific player. And of course, all these idi idiosyncrasies that Sonoda has, are, are sort of, it's all about control, isn't it? It makes him feel calm. Look at all the twitching. Well done. Six, two. <gasps> Lovely uh, cross block there off the backhand from Langridge. And just enough pop on the smash to get it done. got that sort of take no prisoners style pacey attack the Japanese very highly skilled rifling winners in the front court normally Frustrated. He was a little too greedy there. Just trying to be so proactive in defence. Look at that. Good first touch, but not that one. That'll frustrate him a little. He's been masterful around the front court for all these years. Yeah, a string one, you could hear it from Marcus. He announced it, didn't he, midpoint, almost to... Yeah. Well, sometimes you see a player run off, but there was no time to do so there. Just cutting the strings out so that the uh, frame doesn't buckle. Savagely done, no nonsense there. And of course, when the opposing team are aware that you've broken a string, you generally get all of the play. You can see it there, right at the top of the frame. Yeah, 
Great camera work. Port called, too high. mistimed it didn't he he was all over that point language had that but of course when you're playing up there you've just got milliseconds to make split decisions and it's so easy to just not quite get it out in the middle of the racket yeah this is what i would have done suggests nathan robertson <laughs> lovely guy and a terrific former player champion here in mixed doubles back in 2005 with gail ems of course English winners. Well, it looked pretty academic, didn't it? Didn't like that, miss. Oh, it was the lights. <laughs> Heard that several times before. in right on the line what a rally spellbinding the uh, level of uh, reflexivity here from both teams very close yep right on the edge enjoyed that one Well, big change here, 11-5. It's the British team that head to the turn with the upper hand. Six point cushion for them.
well done. Yeah, he broke a string mid-rally and he looked to his kit box as if to say, can I make it or not? But uh, elected not to, carried on the rally and mercifully, the shuttle came straight to Marcus Ellis's racket. And despite the string bake, he managed to put it away. Look at that, he nudged that one purposely. He looks over, look, as if to say, can I make it? Don't need to, thank you very much. Well, the Japanese, by all accounts, struggling the uh, far end a little, not getting the help with their uh, attacks that they did when they were this end, this near end, slightly quicker of the two ends, this one, favouring the English right now. Oh, Chris would love a do-over there. It's not going to happen. Service error. He's the master at breaking rhythm, isn't he, Langridge? Not always for all the right reasons, but you'd rather have him on your team than not. <laughs> Quick early return, wasn't it? Really set the tone for the point. Another broken string. This time for Langridge. Well, expect all out attack from the Japanese right now. There'll be high risk returns where they just run to get the contact really quickly. And we are unable to. Salvage anything there. Good heat from the English team, all out attack, keeping the aggression up. That's what it's all about, they know it. Keeping the Japanese under pressure. to uh, flush the disappointment of that opening game away. The English can come out fighting doubly as strong. It's been a really good mental turnaround from them. Very well played. 
So, Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge have 11. No, they don't. I thought this was game point opportunities, not so. It was going, wasn't it, all the way? 20, game point, 19. So here we go then, 11 game points for the two Englishmen. Really enjoying their time on show court one. <coughs> Quarter finalists here last year. Can they go one further this year? They've given themselves a really good fighting chance at a semi-final proposition at the All England Open here. Alison Langridge, secure game two, 21 points to nine. That's quite emphatic. One game shootout then. Who's it going to be? The English at the tougher of the two ends. Can they find a way against this tough Japanese pairing? Semi-finalists of 2019, of course, the men in white. Against the quarter-finalists of last year from England. Technology mishap momentarily. But all's good now. A lot of approval. Right, we're ready. Are you ready? Start of game three then.
Well, interestingly, Nathan Robertson, during the change of end, suggested that these two are to be really more forceful in defence this end and only lift the odd one over Kimura. So it'll be interesting to see how they go in that regard. Another string break for Langridge. There's been several of them, haven't there? Perhaps he uses a very fine gauge. He's got plenty in the kit bag, hasn't he? Ready to go, look left on the side in case he has to run. No stone unturned. This time it's Marcus's chance to change your racket again. just spilt over the back line can you believe it he can't so easily done he had the court at his mercy didn't he didn't quite get hold of it matches like that can turn and misses like that sadly Not lacking Four. determination, that's for sure. They never have done these two. Very tenacious in their approach. Admirable. and return again from Kimura. Good serving. Thank you. 
Just enough pace to buckle him. Firm up firing. Yeah, just too much in attack, wasn't it? Overwhelming. Two Japanese just wired for points like this. Once they get on the front foot and they're in that sort of mood, just so tough to get the shuttle past them. And of course, the English just so reticent to uh, lift in that situation. Another long rally. Nine, five. Again going the way of the Japanese. Well, I thought the longest rally of the match was the one at game point in the opening game. 52 shots it was. This one might have exceeded it. That's gone wide though. Japanese gesture and keep pressing guys. Yeah, 70 shots it was indeed. It's surpassing the other longest rally by 18 shots. Wow. He's aiming the right side. No, no, not enough drift to haul that one back in, though. Japanese really staying on the front foot well, using the advantage of having a little bit more speed in their attacks from this near end. the Japanese keep on the front foot keep the foot to the floor that's what that was all about six point cushion for them as they head to the mid game interval they lead by 11 points to five in this deciding game Right. 
So will the Japanese ride this momentum all the way home to the semi-finals or can the English get stuck back in here? It needs to start now for the men in red and white. Setting the tone nicely. second hour action out here now in this men's doubles quarterfinal and it's been very very engaging throughout it certainly hasn't disappointed anything but with the strong arm of the law is the message. Just a little frustration vented there, you sense, by Chris Langridge. Probably aggrieved at the fact that they're 10 points shy on the scoreboard. That's what it's all about. That's a lapse in concentration all round after that little outburst. away from the last four in the men's doubles. Good leave from Kyrgyz Sonoda. Extending their lead with this precision leave. Oh. 
Sarah. Oh, that's brilliant from Sonoda. Twenty match point eight. Twelve match points then for Kimura and Sonoda now. Kimura and, and Kiego Sonoda from Japan, the third seat, make their way through to the semi finals of the men's doubles after a very close run affair. The little bit of a lopsided deciding game 21 points to eight. But they've come through nonetheless. And uh, Marcus Ellis and Chris Language, well, it was a plucky effort, but not to be in the end. Japanese having the last laugh and extending their head-to-head to 4-0 -head to over the two Englishmen. So again, it's back-to-back quarter-final showings at the All England Open for Chris Langridge and Marcus Ellis. And a lot of broken strings that'll need repairing. They'll go on to the Orléans tournament next week to take on the Algerians. But for now, it's these guys that move on and extend their stage of the weekend. Japanese third seeds safely home to the last four in the men's doubles. Look at that. Four or five broken rackets right there in that part. You need to have your own stringing business, don't you, to keep the cost down? Well, I can tell you that the third seeds will take on Astrup and Rasmussen in their semi final tomorrow. The Danes through against the Popovs from France in the match out on two earlier. But for now, Sonoda and Kamira safely through.
Well, the men's double shaping up nicely then. Look at that, Astrup and Rasmussen, the Danes, at the top of the draw. They came through earlier against uh, the Popovs, 10 and 14 in just over half an hour. And Kimura and Sonoda taking down Ellison Langridge in an hour and seven minutes, 21-8 in that deciding game.